So we're picking up where we left off last time in the Hunter Classic, continuing our hunt for a 200 Whitetail and trying to take it a bit more seriously with camo and scent control. And I just happened to look and there was a competition running for basically your biggest Whitetail buck in your first four harvests, but it has to be taken with a vertical bow. So we have the crossbow today to stay silent, but not actually pretty much enter small bucks into that comp. And then we have the recur for some of the bigger ones. And I think we're gonna try a slightly different route. So we're gonna fast travel to here like we often do, but then once we get to that point, we're pretty much just gonna go up and around like this, and then down into the swamp, and from there we'll kinda see what happens. But it's kind of a different way than we usually go. We don't hunt this particular area much. So I'm curious to see what that does for us, but we'll start off by going down here. And of course, a black tail doe of all things is not what we wanna hear, but there might be some white tail bucks in the area. And there was in fact a white tail buck coming in, actually for a small one, Kind of cool, he's got like a split brow going on, and a little drop time, but as I mentioned, we have the crossbow for some of these smaller bucks, and that's just going to actually conserve those four uh, entries for like higher scoring ones, so ideally he'll stop somewhere for us. I don't often shoot deer directly under the stand with a crossbow, but I imagine we should be okay. Eh, kind of what I thought would happen, we got a single lung, so he's going to run off. It did actually send a white-tailed doe running behind us as well. Then let's look at the map, because that's kind of the direction that we need to go anyway. It'll take us out around a little bit, but we'll sort of go and track him. We'll probably find him somewhere up in that area. And then we'll sort of get on the path that we put down there. As far as I know, it's kind of just like lucky placement with a little sticker there, but it would be kind of cool if there were specific double brow tines and stuff. But anyway, that was a right long shot at 6 meters, so kind of unfortunate we couldn't even drop him there. But a 116 score... And he didn't really take us that far off our path. We can pretty much just head straight across here and get on that, so it wasn't too bad. That is not the buck that we were trying to call in. He's kind of coming in behind us. He's not a bad size. It said new trail when he grunted. There's supposed to be one coming in from kind of this direction. Well, there is one too. Let's check. I don't think it's very big either. So I've been tracking this one, and unfortunately he's just like a high weight and lower score. So we'll try to bring this guy down. I think there's a chance the other one's not going to hear it. Shooting a little low wasn't the best thing. I think I might have aimed for 10 meters instead of 20. He doesn't know. The only thing is, we need to get the crossbow reloaded. So we're going to have to kind of time this. Hopefully about now is going to work. I don't think he's going to spook. He might see us, but we should be able to get prone and get a shot off. So this time we aim with the middle one. That'll be a little bit better. So we gotta go and track yet again. I should have actually... Let's go back and get a track from him. Because I want to make sure that actually was the right buck. There's a doe sneaking in back there too. It is definitely the right deer. But unfortunately I can see there, that first buck was actually just body hit. So he's gonna run for a bit. And there actually was another buck yet that I want to go back and track. So down here at the marker, I basically had 275 to 95 kg tracks. And this buck here happened to be an older track, and the idea behind that is track the older track, hopefully the newer one is still there by the time we get back, because sometime after an hour the tracks just disappear. But that is just a little 106. The good news is, despite the three smaller bucks, we've not actually had to use the recurve to sort of waste, I guess in this case, one of our entries, so as long as we can go and find this guy, he kind of went back towards our other dot, hopefully the next buck we track is going to be a little bit bigger. I'm pretty sure actually this is the track that we need as well. Yeah, that's a 75 to 95 and it's almost an hour old now, but our other buck died right beside it, so it didn't really cost us much time having to track him. Definitely not the best. I mean, 16 meters, I'm surprised we didn't clip the bottom of the lung, but we were kind of low. So like I said, hopefully now that we've gotten a couple of the more average sized bucks out of the way, hopefully we can use the recurve on this next one and actually make it an entry into that comp. It might be the case that we just got like a really good whitetail spawn in this particular area, because there are whitetail deer all over the place, but I feel like in general, we've covered a decent amount of the map now. We might just have a good whitetail spawn throughout, which would definitely be a good thing, because we've seen a lot of those already just kind of getting around trying to track the bucks, and I will say as we kind of reload the crossbow here, the other buck is coming in, and I feel like maybe it's the scent control, maybe it's wearing these clothes, maybe it's just luck, but... The last couple of times that we've done this now, I really do seem to do better tracking, like finding the animals quickly. And that's a big deal when there's a decent amount of heavyweight tracks that we end up following. So sadly we now know, both of the 75 to 95 kg tracks we had were pretty small bucks. 
but this might be the most lopsided weight to score estimate I've ever seen. 80 to 95 kg in 55 to 75 on the score. He's probably only going to score in the 60s. There's yet another buck though. Like I was saying, it seems like a really, really good spawn for them. So let's call again. This guy is getting good and close. And it should actually give us time to claim both the doe and the buck. And I just want to know, score doesn't matter. I want to know what this guy weighs. Because I can't think of any of this size I've seen that weighed very high. That's a pretty easy shot to make when they're that close. The bolt's going to pretty much go all the way through them. We'll claim this guy and then put out another call. I wonder if he's going to be like 81 kg though. 85? So that could have, I guess, technically been 85 to 100 track. That would have definitely been worse. But I can't think of any that I've ever seen that had an estimate like that. So kind of bad luck, but... Maybe it still led us to a better buck of this one that Grunt that's going to be a little more interesting than the previous four. You know, there was a time back when we did only classic on this channel that we did a lot of whitetail hunts, and I would often say when we just found like a lot of small bucks, that it was good to get the smaller ones out of the way at the beginning to hopefully find bigger ones towards the end, but usually it didn't take five to find anything even remotely decent. At least we're starting to drop them now, but... We're not even managing to up our recurve kill total at all, because they've all been so basically tiny that it's not worth the entry into the cop. So yeah, another one that's probably going to score around 50. At least he's kind of different. He's kind of like a high rack of that same general frame. More of a weight that makes sense this time. Almost the perfect troll score as well. Just would have been <laughs> par for the course, I'd say, so far. But at least we're kind of still on our route. Maybe as we head south, we're going to continue to find as many deer, just hopefully a little better quality. I mean, I guess if we're going to keep getting kind of average sized bucks, it's nice to get some kind of unique ones. This is an interesting frame. He's got a couple of stickers as well, but I can't think of the last time we shot one that looked quite like this. There's just kind of something with the main beams and the height of the tines that you don't see often. He's also a mainframe 8, which might kind of be the biggest thing, because a lot of times they're mainframe 10 or 12s. So a good looking deer, just nowhere near what we actually want for the 200. I wish there were ones like this that got like a lot more massive. I know you can get like a 150's 10 point, but the 4x4's really don't get a whole lot bigger than that generally, and I like that frame a lot, it would be cool if they did that. It's pretty much just par for the course at this point. We fast traveled, and pretty much had this buck right on top of the tent. And yet again, he's a pretty small one. We'll see if we can do better than last time. Those straight down shots are kind of tough with the crossbow since you have the like 10 meter or if you're using the reverse draw, the 20 meter dot. Because then it's not exactly where you're shooting when it's straight down, but that time I'm guessing we got spine, heart, or both. Take a look here. And it's actually spine and lung, which doesn't happen that often, but 108 for him. And I think what we're going to do is pretty much we'll go and check out this tree stand right near us. And then we'll sort of loop over towards this tower because it's been a good area for us before. And I gotta think... Somewhere out here is a decent sized buck. It's just a matter of actually finding it. Might kind of try to get around that doe so we don't spook her towards anything that might be in front of us. Well, he's not huge by any stretch of the imagination, but it seems like this was the right place to go. There's actually three bucks in this area, and that guy was 70 to 80 kg, so he's 100% going to weigh less and score more than twice what that one did earlier. There's also a smaller one to our left, and then one that grunted somewhere over there. But I think this is going to be a good one to use the recurve on for multiple reasons. The biggest reason is hopefully to not spook the others. Then of course he's actually decent enough that it's kind of worth taking that shot. That guy... I don't think spooked anyway. I think I can still hear him. Walking kind of through the grass and then... I know it was on like that part of the land. I don't see the third box so... We'll try to take this one with the crossbow. I don't love where we are actually. Just because of the reeds. We'll have to kind of stay ready because I think he's pretty much directly in front of us. Can see him moving a little bit there. Just need to make sure we actually drop him because he's going to go back towards that other deer. That'll take care of that. And now, I think we're fine to reload. Hopefully that other guy's going to come in. The only other thing I can think of is that maybe he just went to sleep, but we'll sit here a minute. I guess if there's a silver lining because unfortunately he is small yet again, it's that we're not ending up like tracking him down or anything. He's just going to come in here. At some point, if he stops, I'd be fine to take him from over there with the crossbow because he's kind of coming into where we were. And I moved just to be able to have a better look at where he was coming from. Stopping right back in there. 
that's gonna bring him down. And we got three all from right around that tower. We're not quite to it yet, but it's just up ahead of us. So I'm glad we stopped over here. We may use our last fast travel here sometime soon, and I don't even know where we'd go. Maybe down to here. Because there's got to be some other bucks around, despite the fact that we've now killed close to 10. There's only been the one here that's even kind of remotely decent, and he's probably maybe only 140s. I kind of forget the estimate. And yeah, he's only at 144, so somewhere out here has to be a better one. I know I mentioned this in a recent stream, but I don't think I've had it in a video yet. They actually fixed this trophy shop pose, because with the recurve, the bow used to kind of go through your knee. But I guess at some point they kind of changed it, because now it actually looks good. And I wanted to get to show that there with our 140s, and at least we actually dropped them there in the open in a nice spot for a picture. Then we have these other two smaller ones, and I'm not sure if we're quite able to fast travel just yet, but I wouldn't imagine that there's too many other ones around. The thing is, when we've been in a game for, you know, over two hours at this point, it could be about anywhere. So for our third one, we ended up with another double lung shot and 109 score. They've all been kind of around there. They're not even 120s mostly. They're kind of like low 100s or actually even smaller than that. But let's see. We can fast travel hopefully fairly soon. Two minutes. So we'll just kind of run and see if we get another grunt. And if not, we'll head down there. It only made sense that somewhere out here had to be a better whitetail buck. And this guy right out here in front of us is definitely better than anything we've seen so far. But I think he's actually an 8x7, I'm not sure. But, like, he doesn't have that extra tine on his right side, so that's going to hurt his score considerably. 160 to 185 is a solid estimate, and if he was an 8x8, I could see him getting mid to high 170s. I did look at the competition, and we need, I think, 182 to get third place. Especially with that missing tine, I just don't see that happening at all with this guy, but we're still going to take him with the recurve. But to go back to something I said earlier... At least we're getting some unique bucks today. We had that one pretty big 4x4. A 7x8 is quite rare. I don't even remember the last time we shot one of those. And then we had another one as well. I know I commented on it, but I can't actually remember what it was. I'm curious to see what this guy ends up scoring, though, because I do think that's probably, like, roughly a 175 without the deductions. He's got one short time on that same side that he has the extra, but that's going to cost him quite a lot. Shallow's a bit high, by the way. So yeah, he's a 163. He's easily got, with the one time that's missing, probably like four or five inches of deduction. And then, yeah, naturally, it's this time here that's really tall. And then its opposite one is really short, so that would have cost him quite a lot as well. But actually, I mentioned the 144 phone in a good spot. I'm glad we dropped him, because that turned out really nice for our trophy shot. So the better part of three hours spent out here on Red Feather Falls... We had two kind of bigger frame white tail bucks, and it was a decent spawn, just it didn't seem like, unfortunately, the areas where the bigger ones were, were where we started the hunt. Like, we had those five early on, and to get those last two, probably between the first five and the last two, were like two hours. There was a lot of dead time in there, but I'm glad we got a couple of good ones, and I really do think that tracking thing I mentioned is a big deal. Eventually... That's going to save us time and give us the potential to get on another buck. Just hopefully whatever buck that is turns out to be a good one. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.